Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be talking about an incredibly interesting and unique C-Sharp powered game engine that has an incredibly stupid name. In fact, that name I can't really use here on YouTube because the YouTube overlords and algorithms are kind of dumb. The same way people have to say things like unalive. Well, in this case, it's the M asterisk order engine. Uh, again, it's absolute stupidity, but if I want to have this video actually make it to you and not be demonetized, I can't call it by what it actually is. So uh, what you're seeing in front of you, this is one of the games made with it. This is a Ludum Dare game that actually won um, the contest. And that's actually incredibly cool. Uh, this was made in three days. It's kind of a funny and hilarious game uh, on the one level that it's basically, at least initially, a texting and driving simulator. So uh, you're going to have text messages come in as you dodge cars as you go here. Now, the cool thing about this engine is it's entirely ECS driven. So if you wanted to dabble with what ECS is all about, you can. So here I got a text message while driving uh, and doing a video. So I'm gonna fail this pretty hard, but you get an idea of what this is all about. So I'm on my way and, oops, uh, everything is great. There we go. And then I'll just go with no because it's short. So that's kind of what you do at this stage here. Uh, and then I just do a buy and then we're past that stage. It's actually a really cool concept for a game. Uh, and yeah, you just sort of navigating to deliver gives you an idea of at least the gist of the game. By the way, there's no sound going on right now because you need to add a FMOD DLL. I didn't bother doing that. So if you want sound, add the FMOD DLLs to the system path. And here you go. So it gives you an idea. This is what a game created in this engine is all about. So a little bit of core of this engine. It is open source, MIT licensed. It is built on top of FNA, which itself is a re-implementation of Microsoft's XNA. And as you can see here, your game's actually built down. So here you can see the, the one we just looked at, this Ludum Dare game, uh, is called, well, Ludum. Uh, LD game. Uh, you see here it's got an engine and a game portion. So this is where everything is organized. Now the cool thing here is if I come in here, each game has an editor where you compile resources, etc. together. So I'm going to go ahead and run one of these editors. Now who is this engine for? People that are willing to get their hands dirty. There's a lot here, uh, but quite frankly, you're going to need to jump in and figure out a lot of systems yourself. Just one of those things to be aware of. So you can see uh, this is built off of kind of an older version of the editor. I'm going to show you a more simplified version in just a minute, but this is all of the assets we just looked at earlier on. So here you can see this is a car prefab. So we got a variety of different ones. So here cars, uh, we got a motorcycle over there and so on. So various different vehicles that were in our scene, special effects and UI prefabs are here as well. Uh, and then what you're going to notice is these are made up. So I've got the bike selected. The bike is made up of a number of different components. So again, entity component system, entity things in your role, components, things that compose those entities, systems, things that do things to those entities. Okay. So that's kind of how the basic version of ECS. So you see this one is made up of a position, a car component, a car engine component, a collider, an enemy component, a facing component, and then a sprite component here as well. You can add other components if you wish. So I could come over here and you see a variety of different components that are available. So that is kind of the building blocks of this engine. Uh, you're going to notice if you go back over to the source codes for it, uh, those components are uh, all implemented with sort. I'll, I'll show you when I'm not running. I'll show you with the hello world example. It is a much simpler thing to digest. So you see here, this is another thing that's really cool about it here. So you get an idea of just how robust this engine actually is. There is a full um, conversation system built in here as well. So you see, this is one such conversation. This is a text message thread. So you can see this is from the client. And you see there, and then it can branch different directions. So there's the various different options that were available here. And then it branches otherwise. So you saw what we did when we were working with, when we were typing during the game. Those are handled via these conversation keys. Obviously, this could work if you were using an RPG or something to that effect as well. Now, another thing I want to point out about this engine is they seem to have gone out of their way to pick like fonts and colors that are as hard to read as anything out there. By the way, you'll also find when you first load it, I'm running this on a 4K monitor. I had to come in here and up the editor scale. Uh, so it's one thing you may have to do as well. Uh, so each time you click something, by the way, it opens it up in a new window. 
Uh, so one another thing to be aware of as well. But again, everything is basically made out of these various different components that all go together over here. Uh, and then another thing we've got over here is we've got the systems. So these are all the, the doers in your world. You can add various different uh, game systems in here as well. Uh, you've got tile-based map editor. I'll come back to that in just a second. You have story editors. So you got various different uh, things that can happen in your story. Now, what you don't have to explain all of this is documentation. So uh, yeah, you're going to do a lot of trial and error here. There is not a lot of content out here explaining exactly how this engine works. And as you saw from the complexities that we were looking at here, there's, there's a lot going on here and trying to figure out exactly uh, how these things work out. It's not trivial. Again, this is definitely one of those engines that needs uh, a little bit more documentation. So you can see this game is broken out over to uh, a variety of different days. Those days are built up of this various different logic here. Uh, here you can see the popular, all the cars that are populated into the world are being shown here. So you can add or remove them out accordingly. And then there is code behind the scenes driving all this. Here is where all of your various different sounds are. Uh, your story characters here. So the various different conversations you have. So as I'm doing delivery, again, we saw that earlier on. The speakers are the people that can talk. So those are the, the various different. So you saw when you talk to your grandma earlier on, she can have different states. So uh, it can be serious or happy kind of thing. So there is a ton going on here. There's even a UI layer here as well. Um, so yeah, there is a lot to this engine. You've got uh, resource management as well. So it's got all the various different assets that you're using and previews of them available here. And then you ultimately use this to export out your game. Now go back on over here. Uh, we'll see here, your game is built up of this side of things. So here again, our game is built up of components. You saw we used some of those components earlier on. So a car component, for example, here. And generally components are pretty simple. So they're, they're mostly containers for data. Uh, and then on top of that, you have a variety of systems that work on these components. So you can see the various different systems that are available here. So for example, our player input system is here. So this is what controls how our player moves around in the world. Now trying to figure out the relationships of how all of these things work together, this is very much a non-trivial task. Now what you're gonna probably wanna do is start off with this guy right here. They have a very simple, uh, level or game to work with, Hello Murder. This is, again, about as simple as they get. So let's go here. We'll show you the quickly the game in action. Again, entirely C-sharp driven. Uh, FNA is the, uh, the tech on the back end. So, oh, does it not let me run from this? Uh, new exception. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll load this from the editor instead. So here we'll go, uh, each, each game has an editor. The editor is responsible for making the content as well. And you can actually evoke your game from the editor. So this is where you probably want to start things off. This is where you would, you know, you'd clone this repository, make sure you do it recursively, by the way, so you get all the required resources and libraries, etc. And then you'd work from here. So again, much simpler breakdown. So you've got things like, uh, you know, definition of your character. So character is being defined here and then the systems that are available for it, etc. cetera. Uh, then we've got down here, we got prefabs. So for example, here is the player prefab, really simple here. It has a collider. So it's basically the shape that physics will hit it with. Uh, it has a position data and it has a sprite component. So if you wanna add new components to something over here, pick the component you wish. So if I wanted to have say, uh, an alpha, I thought I saw that alpha component is here. So now we can control the alpha of this one here, you see over there, and then the values of it are available there. So you see the, the alpha value can be changed. Let me see if I go to 0 0.25. So there you see, uh, that's how things work. And again, you got full interactivity with them over here. It is a really cool and robust engine for sure. By the way, this was made a lot uh, more recently than the uh, murder example. So the leveling tools, all the stuff you see here, it's gonna work slightly different. And you're gonna notice down here, your game settings are here. So for example, if you wanna change your DPI scale, you do that over here instead. But that is kind of a quick introduction to it. We've got tile sets here, simple floors available. Uh, let me try and bring up a map. So you can know the world. So here is your world over here. Let me just drag that over here. You've got a variety of different systems, tile sets available. So I can pick a tile and I can basically start you know, creating in the world. So it has a full integrated smart map editor in here as well. There's a ton on this engine. You would actually be somewhat staggered by how much this engine can actually do but trying to actually figure out 
<laughs> how to do it uh, is going to be a bit more challenging. So here I'm defining pathfinding for uh, this certain area, for example. So that kind of gives you an idea of the tooling of the engine. Now the question is, how do you get started with this guy? And again, what I would recommend doing is bringing down and running this example. So you see here, I do game, play game. So this is the hello world or hello, uh, M-U-R-D-E-R. Um, and then here you can see all the stuff I just created over there. You got your player sprite over here. It's super simple. Uh, now, the funny thing is I've never actually figured out how to exit your game. So here, select our, our character. So there is our player in the world, for example. And you see all the various different components that are attached to our character. And we can drill into those and find details of them over here, all the various different properties of each component. So all of this stuff is related, works together, and so on. And you evoke your game from the editor. The editor is used to build the binary versions of the resources. And it kind of decouples the two from each other. But you're going to have basically a custom map editor with each game. And it's going to break it down like this for you accordingly. So what you probably want to do, clone this repository, rename it to whatever you wish your game to be. And then going to notice again in here, so simple, simple thing. So here is your player component. It doesn't actually do anything, but you can see how it is composed over there. Uh, ditto down here. Here is a state machine for uh, menus. So for options and quitting and starting and so on. That gives you an idea of how menus are controlled. And then systems. So here, this is the basic controls. The, this is the... Uh, uh, what is this actually defining? Player input system component, which was ultimately attached to your player over in the editor. You get an idea of how it's implemented here. So this does a, a super simple introduction or a very simple shell of a game, and you would go from there. Again, this is not an engine to get into lightly because there is a utter lack of documentation for it. Just one of those things you're going to want to be aware of. So it is MIT licensed. Uh, it is available up on uh, GitHub. It's been around for a couple of years now. It seems like the, the first commit was about three years ago. So it's been in development for a while. It did like a year and a half or two years ago. It was used to make that Ludum Dare enter entry we saw earlier on, which you can download as well. Uh, and that actually won Ludum Dare. So they're, they're dogfooding their own engine, which is quite cool. Again, MIT license, you like what you're doing, drop them a star. Uh, so details of the engine, again, bad name, uh, bad name for a couple of reasons. Number one is I can't talk about it on um, YouTube, which is idiotic, but that's YouTube's fault. Again, built on top of FNA, uh, very interesting project. There is no NuGet yet. It is still under development. Uh, so this is one of those things you're going to, uh, you know, expect things to break as you work with it. But again, you're also building off of uh, an editor version, which is sort of frozen in time. So it shouldn't hurt you that much. Um, there are a variety of uh, different repositories that are part of this. Some of these are interesting that are built on top of it, such as Bang, which is the ECS system that is actually using. Uh, also, we got Gum. We saw that earlier on. That is the narrative scripting language that was embedded inside of Murder for doing those dialogue trees. And then we have those two demos we talked about. So we have Hello Murder, which is your, ah, uh, use that word. Hopefully, I'm far enough along now that context isn't going to screw me. Uh, but we've got that one, the hello world entry kind of concept, an introduction to this. And then we also have the um, the demo we just looked at, which is Neo City Express, all available there. So again, underlying system that this is using is called Bang. You could potentially use the entity component system side of this in your own C Sharp or model game title if you wish to just use that part. That is available as well. So consider that one a bonus project uh, that we got here. Uh, it was last updated a week ago. On top of that, we've got Gum, the narrative system here, uh, still being updated as well. Uh, and this, again, is for doing uh, branching log dialogue um, conversation. Again, it can work entirely from the command line, and you could use this independent of this engine as well. Uh, and then we've got, again, the Ludum Dare example, Neo City Express. Clone this one. Now, of course, when you clone it, very important, do this. So go into it, and then do an update in it in recursive. So that will bring down all of the, the dependencies and the uh, M-U-R-D-E-R libraries and bang and all the rest of it. Uh, this works with Visual Studio 2022, by the way. Uh, so yeah, make sure you recursively clone this one. Uh, and then the other one here, we've got that Hello World Act uh, to get you up and started as well. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it updated three months ago, so they are keeping this current as well. This is so your entry point. Once again, make sure when you clone it, you clone it recursively so you do get all of the dependencies that it has. This is, again, where you probably want to start when you're creating your own game, if you're playing around with it or experimenting with it. And finally, we have the website. And again, this goes down to um, sort of like the naming convention and a little bit about the UI. They seem to be purposely picking fonts and color patterns that are as 
unusable as you could possibly imagine. So this is a very hard to read website. And truth of the matter is, there's not a lot here. We got a breakdown of how like the, the various different pieces work together. So the, the editor and the game editor, how they work, they bring out the resources, the game editor brings things over here, where apps come from, they get built into resources, your final game is compiled, you can see a breakdown of how the directory goes. You get a little bit of an introduction in terms of a hello world, but literally it's just telling you to, to go to those repositories. And then all the rest of this is more or less, by the way, not clickable there, only clickable here. So definitely could do a, the UI overhaul, but it's it's the most baseline documentation for code you've ever seen. So, you know, here, what does generate attributes do? It creates a new generate attribute. <laughs> you get a lot of documentation along those lines. Not, not a lot here in that regard. So if you want to get into this one, um, you're going to, you're going to be doing a lot of, uh, getting your, you know, fingernails dirty. So this one is not for beginners, but I think it is interesting enough and unique enough that it is a project of merit. It's a very cool one that community could rally behind and it is very robust in what it does. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the M asterisk order engine. And again, the stupidity that is YouTube, it, it's the game I have to play. Let me know what you think of this engine in general, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.